Dr. Neeraj Jain is a, uh, we, we all know him and there is no need yeah. to introduce him. He himself is a uh, big entity in the field of uh, pain medicine all over India and world. He is a senior consultant, spine and pain specialist, yeah, presently in MD City Hospital and Sri Balaji Action Hospital at Delhi. And he is a very good teacher, very uh, 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 important figure. And he, is a, he has a command over all the pain uh, procedures, especially in the vertebroplasty and all vertebral augmentation and all other advanced features, whether it is CM guided or ULG. Yeah, I would like to invite Dr. Neeraj Jain, sir, to please. Uh, uh, enlighten us thank you sir thank, thank you my friends thank you for inviting me thank you for allowing me to share my kind of knowledge and work and kind of, let's put everybody there is something called knowledge gap and skill gap you know we're trying to kind of maximize all of us together that's what you and we are doing together so let's put across something which somebody knows more than others so let's everybody knows it so that's the whole idea of these conferences so i'll just start with my video am i audible enough yes sir yes sir okay Please. So we're going to talk about something like vertiplasty and gyphoplasty. Before I start my video, I want to show you one small little thing and look at my screen. In all of you, please look at my screen. This is what is vertiplasty is all about. Going through the pedicle, right here, right here, going through the pedicle, right here, right, this pedicle, and by the side of the nerve. So this is the pedicle going into the vertebral body like this, right, getting into the vertebral body without breaching the medial border of the pedicle. Now the idea is we don't have to breach the medial border of the pedicle. That's the whole idea. And then getting into vertebral body and injecting cement and while coming back, stop cement injecting at the posterior vertebral margin. So we start from front and then we keep going back and we don't have to breathe the medial border of the pedicle, which I'm doing now. So just because I'm not seeing the uh, image and you'll be doing everything under CM guidance. So we can do it, uh, you know, two needle technique, either this way or you can do one needle technique with a more oblique trajectory. So I'll, I'll be talking that du during the talk and that, that's it. So we are lucky that God has given us a pedicle to go into the vertebral body to cement. And that's, we should be thankful to God also. We are uh, give a lead now. This is what I showed you a minute back. So we have to get through the pedicle. So we have to be in the middle of the pedicle in the AP and the lateral both views and most importantly in the oblique view. So we are not supposed to, supposed to bring the medial border of the pedicle before we have gone into the vertebral body. So we start from the uh, AP and lateral. We keep taking AP lateral, AP lateral and we take oblique views also. It'll be showing. You can do from one pedicle, unipedicular or need be you can do bipedicular. But obviously, you're not breach the medial border pedicle, which is the uh, which I just showed you. You have to put the monitor on. You have to prepare the patient consent, all investigation. Go to the scan room, look at the scan before you start the procedure. It's a lot of preparation is required before you do the procedure. Now, this is what is the pedicle looks like. So always like a like trigeminal, always have a view of the uh, image what you want to do the procedure because you it's like a war. You prepare yourself for the war, and then before you go to the war. And then you have to start and bring pedicle to the middle of the vertebral body. That's very, very important point not to miss. Have n number of needles, n number of trocars and, uh, and, and the die and LA and uh, pliers and hammers. Everything you will need down the line. Keep your, keep, uh, check your needles if they're all clear and you should practice uh, checking the needle, how to clear them and the stillets and uh, keep different size needles. Like from 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, they're different size needles depending on the pedicle size. Where is the fracture? How much is cement to be filled? And what is the morphology of the fracture? Which level is the fracture? And what is the expertise? You can use your uh, needles, different needles. And I use 2 ml syringes because I, I want to inject small volumes at one time because then if you inject larger volume, there are chances of leakage is very, very high. In, in kyphoplasty, yes, you can take a bigger 5 ml syringe uh, for loading. Always, uh, always, always choose your incision point. Always, always, very, very important before you start a procedure, just like trigeminal. And then you give your local first. And after giving your local, obviously, patient is not supposed to have a big pain. So you can do mild sedation and uh, and post local, which is 26 gauge. Then you do it, put a LP needle, go on to the pedicle. Numb the pedicle because you don't want patients to jump on the pedicle because the cortex is very sensitive. And that's where you put your uh, knife in and get onto the bone. And once you're onto the bone, you take your needle in and just go and touch the same spot, sweet spot, which is up outer quadrant for the left side and upper outer quadrant for the right, both sides, 10 o'clock position, 2 o'clock position. Either you can hammer in if it's a hard bone for the anchoring of the um, uh, vertiplast needle. Once you're anchored, then you start walking in. You start from upper outer quadrant and see AP lateral and oblique. In oblique, you should breach the medial border of the pedicle. That's most important. And that's what you're seeing in AP and lateral. When you, we keep walking in. There's step one, step two, and step three. There are three steps, you know. Once you're inside the body, 
then you can be a step 3 you, this is the medial part of the pedicle you're not supposed to breach at all this is the medial part of pedicle most important step getting into the body without breaching the medial part of pedicle second important step is injecting the cement inside the body without leaking into the posterior canal this is just two step procedure and this is the medial part of pedicle we didn't breach until unless we are inside the vertebral body now we don't have to see oblique view we see ap lateral only if it is a dorsal vertebra we do costal transfer junction where kvar is a very big help you put your needle over the kvar and get into the anterior vertebral body and you don't cross the other side sometimes people make a mistake either they cross in front or they cross the other side no 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 in dorsal vertebra what you do is you you just start from the uh, up, uh, the pedicle and the pedicles are lying in you know, upside down so keep very very clear mind when you are going in the dorsal vertebra your pedicle is moving from upside down and uh, your trajectory will will follow accordingly so i'll i'll keep pausing my because it's going a little fast i'll keep pausing this is what i was saying put a kvar first and over the kvar you can guide your needle in because in the dorsal spaces the pedicles are very small they're more vertical more straightish and uh, you you cannot do much of slant work so you normally have to put two needles if you if there is a big fracture if it has to be a full filling then you put two needles in and that's what it is and what happens is with the kvar you have lot of manipulation you can do manipulation inside the uh, pedicle inside if you put a wide bore needle your pedicle will fracture is a very very small pedicle and your cement might leak you don't want that to happen and that is the safety you know so this is what i was trying to say put a kvar first and put your needle over the kvar in the dorsal i do even in the lumbar area you just see how i'm putting my needle over the kvar and just threading it uh, like a threading the method and get into the vertebral body yes you have a choice you don't always have to do it uh, if it is a hard bone yes kvar if it is uh, you know soft bone you can just walk in like this you just see it's a very very soft bone and sometimes they're so soft enough that your needle falls into the vessel as you are beyond the cortex your needle falls into the vertebral body be very very careful you should not cross anteriorly you or kvar anything needle or kvar should not cross anteriorly if it is a multiple level fracture you st- you take the opposite sides of the pedicle don't go through from the same side because if you go from the same side your needles will fight over each other it won't allow the procedure to be done they are very close to each other until unless it is really required to go, go from the same side so this is important multi level fractures yes this is how we g- kind of you know put a kvar or this is a patient who needs a vertiplasty and kyphoplasty now this is a kyphon needle going there is a collapse if there is a collapse you might have to put a kyphon balloon so you can choose to do that what is required for a given vertebra you select and go accordingly and this is how it looks when at the end of the uh, needle placements be very very sure in ap lateral oblique all views you have not breach medial border pedicle you not gone anteriorly not gone the other side of the cortex until unless is a burst fracture where you can't really help it much this is what it is important point is yesterday also we discussed that people put in a dye if you want to put in dye fine you will see a veins around you know and obviously lot many times you see a basic vertebral vein that's okay you don't mind that but the whole point is let, do not let cement inject into the uh, vein and sometime it is going to central circulation into the heart into the lung and there was a death also so never be over jealous injecting cement number 1 and number 2 if you put in a dye like this uh, you you have to wash this dye off you won't see a drop of cement where it is going so that becomes a bigger problem so this one has to be very clear there's a method to opacify super- opacify cement which i did i inject dye i put dye inside the bone cement you know and that kind of opacifies it further more than barium sulfate i have been doing for last 15 years if there are multiple fractures uh, the whole idea was to aspirate the bone marrow bone marrow from the different needles and before you inject cement in otherwise the cement will get into the permeable circulation and embolization will be there which was the contraindication now that's not the case this is one patient who had a ca also so i do is this is really known and said ready frequency along with the cementing is the best result oriented and with the rt for that matter with the ready therapy cementing and ready frequency they give the best result in a bony metastasis so you might have to do a cementing for stabilization but pain is a very very important component and you have to take care of that this is important slide i when i have to inject my cement in i put patient on an extension i took one or two more pillows extension so that entire uh, spinal column is deloaded and i do some traction also in some patients and this is very very important when about to cement you know that point yes there have been so many kits available in the market they are lot they are exorbitant costly that's very very costly affair and it doesn't really do much of purpose in western world is okay when our case scenario we got a very easy improvised methods we don't have to spend like uh, 1 lakh rupee just for the kit only which is the case in such scenarios this is the one of the kit i am just uh, from the youtube i'm just showing you and this is what how it has been injected they are good for injection point of view but the exorbitance is there if you have your own method indigenous method i think probably that is more welcome and that's very easy easy doing i just show you that after this slides you see my cases 
list of cases after this and this is how it has been done there is a very grad graded kind of thing you know so gradually you inject semen in and if you don't like semen you stop in uh, going through very important slide as the for this one or two things keep your semen in the refrigerator uh, the lower box or the uh, just next to the uh, freezing section and even your saline i would i won't mind if i have a frozen saline coming into my trolley but it should be ice cool saline for that matter because your cement hardening is temperature dependent so it all depends you know uh, how much uh, time you have done for dough time and working time you get a more working time if your cement is cooler than the atmosphere so we even we keep the ot also very cool for that matter and we make a cement inside the um, uh, ball ice cool ball so this is important like this is see the ice cool ball i have ice crystals here this normal saline sterile should be all sterile and i put my ball and make my cement in this ice cool saline is very important the cement is also come from the refrigerator and monomer obviously is going to be in the same box so that is how we kind of make your cement you can make your cement to your choice how soft you want how viscid you want or how you know uh, kind of uh, solidified kind of situation you want from the cement so your viscosity of cement is your choice depending on fracture morphology level and safety and the uh, whether it is a posterior dehiscence and all or your worrying leak if there is a leak worry is worry then make it a more solid cement if the leak is not a worry then you can put more liquid cement also but in kyphoplasty you can straight away put a more solidified cement you don't have to put a liquid cement much in and this is how cement has been made i put in a dye i told you i put in antibiotics also in the same cement and i am just uh, trying to get the right consistency before i start injecting so this is very very important i different syringes different trocars needles everything has to be kept in mind and i keep some pads here for the reason that when i have to do a pusher pushing the pusher into the needle when the cement hardening is hardening at that time your uh, these gauze pads are very very helpful a plier and hammer is always of a big help because sometime your needle gets stuck so you might have to this is antibiotic i'm adding to the cement here and and then once the cement is of right consistency i used to have a syringe i told you so i load to no air there should not be any drop of air because air is uh, is compressible so it won't allow the cement to be pushed in and you don't want to push air inside in any case so that's very important and then once your cement is keep in mind this morphology your needle might be here right in front but you start injecting cement this this may just regurgitate back into the uh, basic vertebral vein uh, foramina you know it here so you don't have to worry it's not in the in the epidural space it's not in the spinal canal per se it's in one of the venous system wait for 10 15 20 seconds let the cement harden itself embolize itself once it is embolized you can change your needle track needle bevel and start injecting inside so that's important point here so this is important to remember you should know this more this uh, venous system and by the way it's a venous plexus the whole vertebral body is venous plexus there is no person no artery this is all venous plexus and this is how we start injecting cement inside attach it well you can use a lear lock if you want to be i don't use because i want if my cement is not looking good i immediately remove the syringe and aspirate it back sometime if need be and that is cement so you start the start from the vertebral vertebral margin keep injecting keep seeing it keeps coming back into the and stop somewhere here if you are uh, no why starts have stop here for people like us we even fill the vertebral body up to the last margin and even the pedicle sometime we kind of cemented this is this is the dorsal vertebra and this is how the cement casting would look like you know inside the vertebral body and that's how it is will look like inside the vertebral body and is is obviously you are hardening the bone back and this is the cementing in progress and this is uh, when we keep redraw we drawing and keep seeing not even single drop cement injected without live floor or remember live floor is important check myelogram is very very helpful and you sometime you are lucky to get a pen what you would fill this is pedicle by the way what you saw was a pedicle there was not even single drop of spill so this is one of those patients i'll be demonstrating procedures also now how it is now we just this is a four needle in place i'm just showing one of the patients so i can choose if i'm not happy with the cement in here is going towards the basal vertebral plane i go start injecting my cement in there and i keep changing my needle if need be i let the cement harden in there it's like an rf you put two three four needles of rf you doing one rf you putting second needle in and second rf third needle in so you're saving on your time and that is how it has been done i'm putting cement in the other one now and my this cement was actually i allow it to regurgitate so if i'm not happy with the cement positioning i allow it to come out or i might aspirate sometime if you think you, you my, it is going wrong place but you are very very careful that you not but anyway keep the needle uh, track clear if your needle track is not over, uh, cleared of the cement it will harden in no time because in body is at 37 degree outside it is uh, much cooler so it stays liquid for longer time remember that's the differential temperature which is very very important all cement is to be injected in live floor don't this basic what you will when i told you remember this this is why i stop injecting cement in here i want it to be embolized before i go further 
so this is one of those uh, things important hai. and and it is in life loro not allow cement to come into the spinal canal or uh, into the uh, neural foraminas that's very important there sometime are multiple body fractures and you might have another fracture coming in as we discussed yesterday so osteoporosis is a systemic disease treat osteoporosis aggressively you keep getting new fractures i have cemented 10 uh, fractures vertebrae aggressively you keep getting new fractures i have cemented 10 uh, fractures vertebral bodies in one of the patients like one pain of previous ones myelography is very very reassuring in such a, and when you remove needle it's very very important point as soon as you off the pedicle you break the cement inside the needle and inside the vertebral body otherwise there will be a cement nail which is sitting in the soft tissue which will be very very difficult to remove so many people make a mistake when you especially when you hurry like yeah, even i get this complacency is bad so it's like a saudani atti durghatna gati so those kind of scenarios remove the uh, break the connection between the needle and the vertebral body cement very very important now remove the needle and preserve your cement very important because what cement inside the body and outside the body they should uh, kind of you know uh, kind of you know uh, look alike uh, this uh, you can find uh, when it's hardening from outside always relish your work you know get, keep digitizing your work and keep digitizing your own photos also because uh, after all life is one life to live you have to maximize so keep have, enjoying your good work on so keep the extension on till cement hardens because you don't want to load the cement once you put inside this is about kyphoplasty now the second po- po- portion is a kyphoplasty and that what is kyphoplasty in animation looks like and that's what we're going to do transpedicular and uh, this is and this is vessel plasty we can put inside vessel in there and it stays in there inside the ball cement inside the ball and tentacles which holds this cement ball in place now this is the first needle in place we put in a trocar op- make a space for the balloon first once you make a space for the balloon take the balloon in there up to the margin into your margin or mid body depending upon where you want to keep it and you want to elevate the end plate and that's how it looks like when you inflate the balloon it is elevated around and then this is one vertiplasty one kyphoplasty so this is the kyphoplasty balloon it is not always the spherical shape it may take different shapes please be ready because fracture uh, itself you know takes the balloon to different shapes now this is one of the uh, work which i do very often in a retropulse fragments i put a post anterior epidural balloon in there hold the fragment in place and when i put inflating my balloon in there i try to see my fragment free fragment which is their free fragment is not falling back into the spinal canal so it's mainly for free fragment and to kind of put a plug the cement leak and thirdly is visualize suppose there's something is going wrong at the posterior margin how would i know it i this balloon shows me everything so what i'm doing in there this really gives me visual impression and i keep inflating deflating alternatively these two balloons and to maximize the intervertebral height and not to cause a posterior post retropulsion for the retropulsion which happens per procedure many people do it when they inflate the balloon they it gets more retropulse that's a big worry that is one of my workshop and that is how we are doing it putting a balloon right up to the intervertebral margin uh, you know most likely yes close to that because balloon is just behind that so you can take uh, this thing up to the intervertebral margin uh, or intervertebral body and then you start inflating it and you will see this keep taking ap lateral ap lateral this is very very important this is a very uh, cm intensive procedure not to miss on that because if you leak cement in this is going to be a surgical case straight forward this is what the balloon is there right here but in margin this is the uh, balloon right just 3 4 5 mm is just behind that and then you start inflating attach it well and once you're trying to inflate keep the balloon in place otherwise the balloon starts moving front and back or it for tries to find the place of lower resistance so it might go front or back or might extrude so please be very careful when you're trying to inflate balloon keep the balloon in place where it want it to be mid body or uh, or the front and accordingly depending on how the fracture is and you start in uh, increasing pressure for up to 4 700 psi you can go but mostly in osteoporotic fractures 100 psi is more than enough for to inflation but yes you don't worry but make it in mind these balloons are known to rupture if they meet a bony spike it might rupture so you don't have to worry keep your second balloon ready and start with that but before you put the second balloon wash the dye which is leaked out of the balloon into the body and then you start the second balloon if need be if you already done your job well i, I sometimes over justly inflate just to inflate the uh, bone if it is hard bone so my balloon burst i said it's okay i don't have to burst my second balloon i go with the cement in now and that is how it looks like if by the way you're seeing another epidural catheter in going in there uh, from this balloon catheter going from the one or two spaces below and that is how it look like you just see this images keep seeing your images keep recording your images and that is how it is antibody this is the mid mid place 
this is how it looks like this is the epidural balloon in there another place where it is vertiplasty is required not all word fracture need vertiplasty this is good for vertiplasty this is good for kyphon because there's a lot of collapse you can just see there's a lot of collapse there's some retropulsion also that's why the balloon was there and that is how it looks like so rosy so nice you can inflate if it is an empty bone syndrome you can inflate balloon to the last you don't have to normally but you can if that is the case so i'm putting a cementing for the vertiplasty and i'll be doing kyphoplasty in this in this in this uh, vertebra and that is how it is been injected so under live 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 i keep saying my boy knows he died on telling but still is out of reflex i keep saying live 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 because i don't want to see if cement is leaking this is coming by the way in the posterior thing but again i am at the ntm margin so uh, i really know it is basic vertebral or by experience you know it is a leaking through crevices or coming in the basic vertebral area, area so by anatomy in ap lateral and by your experiences you know where it is flowing how it is flowing what shape it is flowing it is really uh, maintaining the the vessel cur uh, curvature vessel structure shape or is getting uh, blebby or something like this and this is what the void which you create after the ballooning we once you trying to remove the balloon this is already cavitation you have done a cavitation now you simply have to fill the cavitation you take 2 3 4 5 ml how much you think is a cavity volume you can go in one go one of the workshops by the way in one go you can inject your cement in there and you can just see the cement will flow in easily because empty space now you don't have to worry much but still in live flow i am saying live 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 in live flow i am seeing very exactly it can still leak out you don't you have to be very very careful but then you're more controlled because you have a cavity there is it, it tends to stay at the cavity area so that's not a big worry so that is to be looked at and once it is there clear the needles off always remember clear the needles off the cement might block this needle you might have to change the needle this is a very different uh, technique to that and i do it sometime and when it will get choked you know it doesn't allow more cement going in and that is how in ap lateral keep seeing both views keep one pure preserved on the other side when you change your uh, views so you should have both views ap lateral coming in the view and you take more uh, cement in now and you start injecting in there thereafter you see i have got a nice feel no ever be over jealous please never more problems are because of the over jealous or over filling the cement than under filling under filling patient may have some crevices which you can manage with the good medical management or conservative management or bone healing but if you done overfill and this uh, leaked in the epidural space and there is a cord compression you have to send the patient to the uh, surgical theater so it has never happened and this is what my epidural space looks like it's all canal is wide open and uh, there is no compression i'm removing the balloon now see the idea was a 6 mm balloon if it is it was there if i just take it out of this area my epidural space i have given 6 mm back to the patient which is more than enough in most of the cases you are not much worried with 6 cm this cement uh, i keep uh, putting cement on the patient side and i keep seeing when it is hardens you know so one of the workshop people appreciate it because it's a very very special case i show them balloon kyphon kyphoplasty epidural balloon everything and it is a very nice feel and you just check this patient on table you know if, if there is a relief so the patient is able to shift move sensory motor check is there and is a very tiny incision you don't see must 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 check patient on table i am doing on trolley but do it on table as well also so that is everything is in shape everything is okay and i think and i'm going to talk about the vertebral plan i'm going to talk about the bus fracture i'm going to talk about how do i do a balloon in one of my uh, presentation is very very helpful so i put it for you say done about six level vertiplasty in one go which is so we're going to talk it down the line these are the high end of the procedures and then thread it over the uh, kvri normally put a kvr first if it is a difficult fracture if it is easy fracture straight away go with the needle vertiplasty needle Walk, walk past the mid uh, anterior cortex. Then there is a lot of issues because we have all those major vessels coming in there. The viscera is right around there, so one has to be careful. Now this is the D5, this is the D6. So we've been doing. I've been doing all these fractures very, very commonly, and you see global fill. And these are few improvisation which you do, and then you can really do all this as there. Now I've done many of these uh, multiple level body fractures. Very small presentation. Six level body fractures. Three four minutes. This is a world record that time I presented in Miami World Congress also. And look at this, all six cemented without any leak into the vertebral body, without any fractional deformity. And this is what he really and patient was really suffering, and he became all fine. The lead point in here is that you, when you have multiple level fractures, you don't go from same pedicle, same side pedicle. You try to cross. Sometimes you have to take a bone biopsy also. So take a bone biopsy if you have the same side pedicle on each other, and it becomes very difficult to cement those places. Until unless it's really important to go from same side. But when there's a vertebral plana or a very thin plate fracture, you don't come go from upper outer quadrant because then you tend to cross like this. So you come to you try to come as parallel to the end plates as possible without thinking much about the pedicle part. 
So this is how you can really go right in front and put, put semen. And this is what it is. With the radio versification, you put in a dye. What I have done is I did a presentation in the World Congress. I put in a dye and opacify the semen. In a polytrauma setting, like this is a burst factor. I was giving you a lead for this. This talk is made for this. Uh, you, you don't do for This talk was one of the surgeons' spine surgeons' conference, national conference. You right away. And this is the cementing line. This is nicely well cemented. You see, the even retropus fragment, which is there, is taken care. And this final. There are few patients where you have the uh, cord is getting compressed. Patient in mats. It's a widespread mats. Expectancy is low. Unfit for care surgeries, for the matter. You keep getting these patients. Patient doesn't want surgery, surgeon doesn't want surgery, but it is required, some stability is required. In such scenarios, I have devised my own technique in which I show you. I put a balloon, sir, a space or two from below, through a white bone needle, I put in a balloon, I take it in empty space, and there's a cementing going on here. I'll show you how I do it. This is the one where I'm trying to do cement in there. There's a fracture void. I put a balloon in empty space next to the posterior cortex, and I just inflate the balloon for two reasons. One is it is stabilizes if there's any retroversing fragment, centimeter balloon, six mm inflated, and you give it back to the and totally inoperable and in problem. Look at the uh, cord getting compressed in there and she is already getting symptom of the pressure on the cord. And look at this. I did a kyphoplasty in this patient. Try to inflate as much I could. Anterior inflation only into your column. Don't come posteriorly. There's compromise. Into column inflation. With the balloon in place, I'm doing inflation inflation and the cementing inside. And this was 86. Look at this 86 lady. And this, this is, and she was able to walk. That's a beauty, that's what you want, or vertebral plan are two disc, kissing disc, you can call it for the matter, and there's no bone in here, and this is the vertebral reconstruction. It's not a vertiplasty, it's a vertebral reconstruction. You have a segment, loading uh, segment now there, which can take the load, the flexion, uh, you see sagittal deformity is corrected in uh, many ways, and patient is pain-free. So this Sir, uh, we have to, we have to, uh, we have to almost a minute only, just outside. a minute, okay. Only that yeah, is possible yeah, yeah, one minute. these kind of dirty fractures. Okay. And you have the safety balloon in there, now you fit inside, safety balloon is out, and then you can count your blessings, and these are old patients who cannot go for a surgical correction otherwise, which you tend to tell them to do. And this is what epidural balloon neuroplasty and foramenoplasty, an innovation which I presented in the World Congress of Minimum Spine Surgery in Jeju Island, South Korea in 16. This was it. And yes, the whole idea was to make these uh, vertiplasty safer for these dirty fractures which are uh, either have to go for surgery or they're inoperable for one or the other reason like burst fracture, vertebral plana or retropulse because of the metastatic ones or a multiple level fractures. Yes, we can do it. We can have to make it safe and effective. If there are any questions, uh, thanks to my family because who could spare me to spare time for uh, all this, you know. Thank you so much, friends. Thank you. Uh, stop sharing. Hi, Gaurav. Done. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. You are, it is always a fascinating uh, lecture by you. So we all uh, are just uh, mesmerized. Uh, and thank you, sir. Thank if any question anybody can ask, I'll be more than happy to answer now or even they can talk to me later on also. Yes, I know the yes, time pain was there, but I wanted to give them a message because it's one of the rare procedures. Not everybody is doing it, so I wanted to give them maximum lead so that you do it. Because if they do it wrong, it will be a catastrophe. But if they do it right, it's a miracle. So it is both ways, you know. It's a double-edged sword. So one has to be very, very clear what they are trying to do, give the best relief to the patient or the worst, uh, you know, prognosis. So that is why they have to really learn it, right? So, so it was so important to talk it, uh, you know, in front of this August gathering. So it was my pleasure to share. Thank you, sir. Uh, we will take question uh, uh, in, in the coming time.